Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Nathan Fox, that's Ben Olson. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We've got an email here from Anonymous. Okay. Hi, Ben and Nathan. I'm a non-traditional URM applicant, underrepresented minority, with four to five years of work experience in investment banking. And I was wondering what my odds were for H, Y, S, or Columbia. So Harvard, Yale, Stanford, or Columbia. I graduated from a T20 undergrad with a 3.5 LSAC GPA and recently scored 168 on my latest time practice test. Assuming I can get my score up a few more points, would acceptance to any of these schools be possible given my lower GPA and non-J, or sorry, non-K through JD background? Okay, your non-K through JD background is a positive for you. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know if you're looking at that as a negative, but it's definitely a positive. My end goal is to work in big law, practicing real estate transactional law. Yeah, I <laughs> I think it it is a feather in your cap. I don't think it matters that much because LSAT and GPA are certainly the king here. But um, the fact that you have worked in investment banking and the fact that you're saying you want to work in big law, practicing real estate transactional law, that's a real good fit for these schools. And, you know, you're, you're saying all the right things and you've got the resume to back it up. The only things you don't have are the grades. And right now, the LSAT, uh, you will be a splitter at Harvard, Yale, Stanford. Um, you're going to be significantly below the median GPA at Harvard, Yale, and Stanford, and Columbia with a 3.5. Like, not even close. You're probably below their 25th percentile, yeah. would be my guess. Yeah. So, what's that mean? Well, it means that only one out of every four students at their school have and have a GPA lower than yours. Another way of looking at that is that three out of four, and maybe more than three out of four, because you're probably substantially below the 75th percentile at Harvard, Yale, and Stanford. Below the 25th, yeah. But Sorry, below the 25th percentile. So, it, you know, at least three out of four mm-hmm. are, are going to that school with higher grades, better grades than you did. And, you know, schools look at it from just a purely competitive standpoint you weren't able to get a 4.0 in undergrad for whatever reason. I don't care. They don't care what the reasons are. It's just scoreboard. Yeah. You know, that they're, you're not, you did not put elite grades on your record and you're applying to elite schools. And that's a problem, like a big problem for your applications. That said, if you blow the doors off of the LSAT, like 168 isn't blowing the doors off the LSAT, but 170 something gets you into the conversation, I think, at these schools. But right now, you're probably below their 75th percentile. Sorry, below their 25th percentile also on LSAT. Aren't you? At Harvard, Let's take Yale, a look. Stanford? Yeah, so right now. I mean, I'm, I'm not on, looking at it right now. but I'm on LSATdemon.com forward slash scholarships. I put in 3.5. I put in a 172. Just out of curiosity, I checked the URM box. We don't know exactly how that's going to uh, affect applicants after the Supreme Court decision. But in any case, this is a proxy, right, for seeing your likelihood of getting money, but also like your likelihood of getting in. And right now, like, for example, Yale, Stanford, and Harvard are all need-based, so they don't say anything. But Chicago, ranked three, says less than half. It's predicting you might get a scholarship for less than half of tuition. That's not bad. That means you have a chance. Like you just said, Nathan, this anonymous correspondent is in the conversation, right? Yeah. So now if I click on Harvard, for example, which is currently ranked fifth, um, the 25th percentile for LSAT is 171. So yeah, the 168 is below the 25th percentile. You need to move that up. <laughs> I'm just realizing now that the roll call thing is actually live. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So you can now click on the PDF little icon way out to the right on the scholarship estimator. will take you to the source data, the 509 reports that we build these predictions on. Yeah. But if you click the name of the school, uh, you can then see who pays what at that school. It's a, a 
a graphical representation. We're still tweaking it. This is like version 1.0 of this tool, but you can see um, there's a, a, a group of, what is that, 50 people? And you can see that at a school like Chicago, five out of 50 people are there on a full ride. Yeah. Uh, 6% of them, uh, are three out of 50 are there paying less than half tuition. Uh, 67% pay more than half tuition and 17% pay full tuition. All this is, is a graphical representation of what's going on, uh, on those 509 reports. You can also then, I mean, it shows you where you would be in the class it, it highlighted. So at Chicago, it's estimating that you would be one of those people paying more than half tuition, which means you can get in, which, you know, if your plan really is big law and real estate transactional law, and you've been working um, in investment banking, then for you only, uh, the prospect of $300,000 of debt maybe isn't that bad. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. Ben wouldn't do it, but depending on how certain you are that this is going to be a successful career path for you, if you know what these lawyers do, and if you know you can do that law or that work, mm -hmm. that legal work, um, then, you know, maybe it's worth it not to get a huge scholarship at these schools. I, I do think um, if, if Harvard, Yale, Stanford are are really in the cards, you know, then the money situation is totally different because they do need base stuff. So maybe you get no help if you've been making too much money in investment banking. But if you've spent all the money you've made in investment banking frivolously, <laughs> then maybe you, you will end up getting need based help at these schools. I'd say you have a chance of getting in. I think you need to get a better LSAT score to give yourself a better chance. Everybody thinks that they are going to be the exception to the numbers at these schools. But I wanted to look at the 509. Let me look at Yale's percentiles specifically. Yeah. You know, even with a 172, you're still at the 25th percentile for Yale LSAT. And your 3.5 is way, way, way below their 25th percentile of 3.89. You're just competing against people who have vastly better grades than you. And right now they have pretty significantly better LSAT than you. And I don't think any kind of background is likely to, to overcome that. URM status, though, I, who knows? I have seen some pretty unexpected results in the past from URM applicants where I didn't think the grades in LSAT were going to be enough, but then they ended up uh, getting into some of these top, top schools. I think that they are genuinely interested in increasing the racial diversity of their campuses. And, um, you know, the Supreme court told them that they can't do it the way they've been doing it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they can't keep doing it in some other way. So it, we'll see. I mean, it, only time will tell. I would encourage you to increase your LSAT as much as you can before applying to these schools. Just give yourself the best shot. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school editions news. Thanks for listening.